All right, let's go to town. This is about several little things quickly. Snap judgments, cutting slack, and final judgment. And I got a feeling. I know the cycles of the court. I know my best friend. He's. I got to. I got to start coming up with some funny shit to send him because only the attorneys, that includes the judge, can have an active phone in a courtroom. If you get caught with an active phone, you're screwed. Anyway, let me start off about snap judgments. When I first came, actually the police brought me because I had just gotten clear of the hospital grounds. And actually the, the guard that was ordered to clear me from the grounds was... He could tell it was hurting his soul. This is I was pushing backwards away. I go, stop treating me like a child. You know, he heard me. My voice projects precisely to where I want it to. I'm having trouble today because I want to go up on the crest, but I think the new headset will work well for and overcome any kind of. Because we're, you know, we're having gusts up to forty miles an hour right now. It may not be obvious. You don't see the leaves and you know, the trees but anyway you know at first and that's where the judgment part comes in at first he's going like why are you hanging around all day go away and stuff no they're all this japanese owned corporation 7-eleven was originally a texas creation the southland corporation and it was family friendly on their magazine rack no playboys couldn't even buy it from on the table wouldn't sell any rolling papers stuff like that but i got to know the guy and uh tables kind of started turning when he found out he couldn't you know he thought i didn't speak spanish <laughs> and that's a usually when you see blue eyes yeah they usually don't speak spanish but one day i caught him trying to slip up and slip in after a transaction the phrase and he was botching it a uh, cheap bastard was what he was trying to call me. And I kind of gave him that look like, yeah, sure. But a little while ago, because I've actually been trying to help him because he's got two machines there. One of them is for chai and other, you know, it's, but he's got a Swiss made. It's actually the only drinkable coffee anywhere around here. You'd have to go for a mile or more or two in any direction to get fresh ground, fresh brewed coffee. Okay, yeah, the beans are darker than I prefer, but one of the things is fresh ground is shit that's been ground and kept in the container. It's already been exposed. To, it's oxidizing. It's, I've been trying to get people to use it, and they're drinking that slop out of them big, you know, two-gallon or whatever or more uh, containers, which by the time you get it, there's no caffeine left in it because the tannic acids break it down, the methylxanthine. But this is a little while ago, because I've, I've got them down to them. They know that I don't do the refill thing. I don't play the 7-Eleven rewards or whatever. You know, even, you know, I'll pay, of course, like the smallest cup is under $2. And we both don't like change so damn annoying and i've got them down trained now to where from i never got medium to large any size cup of coffee i'm paying them two bucks yada yada and no joke after i've gotten my it's been pretty slow up there today even though it's monday it's supposed to be and it's been slow if i show you it's been real slow at starbucks you know you don't see much of the they're usually they park all the way up into that lot and use the 7-Eleven lot over there. So, <clears throat> I was just sitting there, kind of, I was jamming out again. Because I'm getting really good sound quality now. I can, and these really do. Anyway. And out of the blue, down that stretch where you see... 3,000 feet going up and down that hill 
came a brand new, like uh, about a $70,000 truck that was so shiny, uh, was blinded by the glare. A uh, Latina woman hops out, has no other business in the area, comes over and hands me a couple of fibers. And in her, she actually was pronounced with little English she knows very clearly uh, for your coffee. Please, most people go say for food. That was a tip off that, because see what I've learned about this guy being a Spanish speaker is that he helps, he has a lot of Spanish speaking help now because it's a necessity in Texas. Yeah, he speaks Spanish, he speaks uh, several, but he, I'm having trouble. If he went to, to Moscow the year he said he did, he must have been with a special trade mission or something from, because he would have been so not even, of course, Hindus tend to age very well. I mean, when I saw Ravi Shankar, I'm going, wait, when I saw Ravi Shankar, I'm going to start talking about the 60s and 70s, whether y'all like it or not. When I saw Ravi Shankar, June 1968, at the Stanford Amphitheater, he was already like 50 or 60 years old, and he looked like maybe he was 25. And I was right up front, center. It's an open air, it's an amphitheater, Stanford Amphitheater. I think he'd already played at the shit, the Bonneray deal and shit. Uh, but I really can't judge the guys. And he's a hardworking fucker. He's up at like four o'clock. He's told me because we will sometimes we'll just do small talk in Spanish. And he gets up at four o'clock. You know, he works 365 days a year. That's his baby right there. He's. And. Uh, he drives around and because the, the other morning I was able to tell they were having a communication problem. I was able to tell the the vendor in clear English that, yeah, you can call him, you know, trying to let the the clerk that was on in the wee hours of the morning that you can. It was like five or something in the morning. I was getting my coffee. I was, and I told him, yeah, he'll he's up. Uh, yeah, he was. And my, my point was, is that no sooner had I just had said, he bought my coffee, the, the, the other clerk took it, $2, they don't even, and he had just came out of the back to see me and said good morning and stuff like that. And the next thing I know, somebody's essentially paying me back for the coffee I'm spending in his, because he knows I'm a big fan. Thank you, no, I'm fine. Thank you, dear. Uh, that's like five hotties in one boom. <laughs> That's that little car is packed. It must be rather warm inside that little. Uh, what the hell is that, Kia? <clears throat> so you know, sometimes you make snap judgments that must uh, later must be a modification. Okay, I'm going going to go tent and we'll go. Let's keep this under. My best friend is I know it's got he's got to. If it ain't this week, it'll be next week. Uh, I got to come up with some funny shit. You know, it's about the only time, unless I have, we have an understanding in regards to replying. He's, we usually communicate while he's in court. Like I said before, he has, only the attorneys may have an active phone. And it had better vibrate, it better be off. Tones off. <laughs> you just check it regularly. You kind of reach into your pocket, pull it up a little bit, a little bit to see whether or not your screen is on. If your screen is on, you can read it, and it's not a problem with the judge or the bailiffs, who are sometimes armed. <laughs> Shit. So, you know, unless I specifically ask him a question, or he's just feeling like chatting. Sometimes he's on his early morning walk. We'll. Because he's got his phone. He always trains his phones for, you know, drag typing. And he's got his phones trained for his diction, his very proper English. And I got a feeling he'll probably be in trial by Wednesday morning. You know, I know of the cycles. I know the... 
been almost 30 years now that we've been in a serious bromance. Yes, a bromance. You gotta love a guy. For all my friends from Australia, my best friend is Bruno Schimek. He's a Czech. He doesn't mind, because he needs a little bit of better publicity than the damn mainstream media gives him. He defends you criminals. He defended me. And I was innocent. I pro we proved it because I'm not stupid. I recorded those buggers. And he's already saved one woman, and he's, real, he's got that Christian drive to keep people off the cross. That's what he really is. His, he's constantly waiting, and he's accumulated the skills, and he's, you know, he's constantly looking and accepting any time there's a possibility that somebody may be fixed, face, facing execution. That's what my buddy Bruno does. So, see, I've told Bruno not to subscribe to my channel. This stuff is, uh, it's too irritating for him. It's the same as me. I don't like the dinging, just like Cass doesn't like all that dinging notification shit. I've told people, don't subscribe really unless you want to see my stuff in chronological order so that this one, so that you understand it's, this is a linear thing going on here. I'm not going to be, anyway. I need some funny shit. I am a funny person, but I tend to just come up with it. If I work at it, it don't really come. It's The other day I just turned on the phone and for about 90 seconds, there were a bunch of people that thought I was in Walsall, England, uh, looking to shag the Benny birds and stuff. It was, I'm still getting responses on that one. Occasionally it's, Sorry, um, that cold air is making, giving me that urge. Well, I'd better go now before my bladder does. So that's kind of the state of the situation. Address here is sometimes we make snap judgments against people, but if they're not all that bad, cut them a little more slack because I know he sent that Latina to give me, because you can tell money that's been in circulation is one thing. Money that just came from the bank is always crisp. And you can tell it's never been in drug circulation because it hasn't been crumpled up. I can take one look at a bill and tell you where it's been. You don't see drug circulation money here. You really don't. So anyway, that's it. 13 minutes and I'm out.